community living in terror after a third person is shot and killed in Seminole Heights. The latest victim story also just heartbreaking. Anthony Nuboa just graduated high school and had autism, and this is just awful. He had taken the wrong bus to that Seminole Heights neighborhood. Not only did he take the wrong bus, but his father was also trying to report him missing to police as officers were responding to his murder. Anthony is the third victim in 10 days. He was found shot and killed on North 15th Street between East Conover Street and East Wilder Avenue. The second victim was on East New Orleans Avenue. The body of the first person killed was found at North 15th Street and East Frierson Avenue. And none of these three victims knew each other. 10 News reporter Eric Glasser is live in Seminole Heights where people are actually being urged to stay outside despite the fact a killer is still out there. Eric, why are police even saying that? Allison, I can tell you that the Tampa Police Department is terribly frustrated by this. They had saturated this neighborhood after the first two shootings around here and were able to get here in minutes last night, but it was still too late. The gunman had gotten away. So now they are asking people in this neighborhood to be outside, not alone, but in groups and be the eyes and the ears of the department so they can catch this gunman, who today the chief described as an animal terrorizing this Southeast Seminole Heights neighborhood. And I go from frustration to anger. Tampa police say it's just too coincidental to be anything but connected. Three murder victims in just 10 days, all within a few square blocks of each other. When you look at the time frame, the proximity, that there is no apparent motive, that they are alone, our victims are alone at the time, it's clear to me that they're all linked. Really close to home. And it's really Joy scary. Dupree, who lives around the corner from two of the shootings, says she could hear the shots. Three the first time, one last night. It's so close that was, that's what makes it scarier. So, I mean, you just stay in the house. Tampa police had already saturated the neighborhood and got to the scene of the latest shooting in minutes. They brought in dogs, called in the SWAT team, but the suspect got away. We instantaneous had a perimeter set up last night. I was convinced that we were going to catch this person. Chief Dugan describing the shooter as an animal and a terrorist stopped short of using the words serial killer. You know, we can call it what we want. If that brings attention to this, that's fine. <laughs> I hope that they can arrest that person. The shootings have people living and working here in fear. Just blocks away at a stretch of trendy stores and restaurants along Nebraska, their worried customers could stay away. People will be scared to come in, especially I'm, talk I'm not talking about that this restaurant, I'm talking about the area itself. Investigators are now checking houses and businesses, looking at security cameras, images that might have caught something around the time of the shootings. This video, still the only real clue they have, a person of interest seen wearing a hoodie the night of the first murder. That's where it starts with that, that video right there. And you can see tonight the growing memorial out here along 15th Street in Tampa. An $18,000 reward expected to climb for information leading to an arrest in this case. Chief Dugan says if you are alone traveling in this area, you are going to be considered one of two things, either a potential victim or a potential suspect. At this point, again, he is asking people in this neighborhood to be alert, to be outside in groups, not alone, acting as the eyes and ears of the department so that they can catch this person. But I can tell you that after speaking with people in this neighborhood today, that advice is going to be a hard sell. I'll have more on that coming up tonight on 10 News beginning at 6. For now, live in Seminole Heights, Eric Glasser, 10 News. About Anthony Nuboa, there are two other families that are grieving tonight. This is 22-year-old Benjamin Mitchell. He was shot and killed October 9th near his home. Mitchell had no criminal record. Tampa police say he was a good person who comes from a good family. Today, the interim police chief talked with his father again because the third victim was murdered outside of Mitchell's home. Families, this morning, I met Benjamin Mitchell, the first person who was murdered. I met his father. This happens nearly in front of his house. The bus stop where his son was murdered was just a few hundred yards away from his house. When you look at victims' families, you know, Mr. Mitchell is grieving the loss of his son and was not home last night to come home to the cops and lights flashing in front of his house to hear that there was a third victim. And for him to meet Anthony Naboa's parents this morning, you can just imagine what that was like.
And there is also a second victim as well. Her name was Monica Caridad Hoffa. She was 32 years old. Police believe she was murdered October 11th, but her body was found more than a day later. The interim chief says while she had some struggles in her life, it had nothing to do with her murder. Monica had some challenges in her life, but she did nothing that should have put herself in this situation. She was completely innocent and was targeted by this animal out there. Tampa police say these are people are, that are not living a lifestyle that would lead to the fact that they may end up getting murdered. We're staying on top of this story for you. As we get new details, you can get updates by downloading our 10 News app.